next we're going to talk about this news that everyone's talking about on the timeline regarding StockX and Nike. So from what I understand of the situation, StockX was trying to, in their in their flipping wisdom, were, were attempting to sell NFTs on their platforms or you know entering into the NFT space by having a separate market space where they'll probably sell NFTs or allow people to really sell them. Cool, whatever. Think of what you want to think about non-fungible tokens. I personally think they're dumb, gay, godless and horrendous looking pieces of art, whatever you may call them. And I wouldn't waste a single dime of my own money on that shit. Personally, that's just my own personal opinion. But I get the technology behind it. I understand the potential of it. I get it. Cool. But the art itself, just talking from a purely artistic, creative, objective point of view, I think it's trash. StockX wanting to sell some NFTs on their platform obviously the nfts will feature sneaker designs that they don't own or anything nike kicked up a fuss and said you can't do that those are our those are our things that we own you can't then sell them on and this whole legal thing happens where you know can you copyright an nft um does nike own the likeness of an air force one in all its guises whether it's painted on a with oil brush or with no whether it's painted with oils with flipping watercolors whether it's imagining your head do they own it in all its entirety interesting debate well it looks like um nike wanted to put one in on them when it comes to StockX and just continue the beef and add it to another level when they when they basically insinuated the following this is it nike escalates StockX feud and says the site is selling fake shoes so in order to kind of really up the ante and put the you know pedal to the pedal to the metal they decided to say hey you know what fuck that you sell fake shoes fuck out of here and this is the following Nike escalated this legal battle with sneaker marketplace StockX, saying it purchased four pairs of counterfeit shoes on the platform despite the company's promise that it only markets authentic footwear. The world's largest athletic maker asked a federal judge to let it add claims of counterfeiting and false advertising to the current trademark infringement against StockX. It said they have obtained the fake shoes, including a counterfeit Edge Jordan 1 Retro OG from the marketplace between December and January. The four pairs of counterfeit shoes were all purchased within a short two-month period on StockX platform. All had affixed them, the StockX verified authentic hand tag, and all came with a paper receipt from StockX in a shoe box stating the condition and that the shoes are 100% authentic, Nike said in the court filing on Tuesday. Nike sued StockX in February in federal court in Manhattan accused the marketplace of blatantly free riding on Nike's trademarks and goodwill with a service called Vault NFTs. StockX argued that the NFTs aren't digital sneakers but simply listings of physical sneakers that are stored in this vault that can be traded to users. Yeah, that's super sketchy. StockX said in a statement on Wednesday that it made its customer protection extremely seriously and it invested millions of dollars in fighting proliferation of counterfeit products. StockX asked, added Nike's latest filing is not only baseless but also curious given that their own brand protection teams have communicated confidence in our invitation program and that hundreds of nike employees including current senior executives use StockX to buy and sell products whoa so StockX were like hey if you're going to accuse us for selling fakes we're going to accuse your own employees including senior staff members of reselling shoes which i think most of them do anyway because i know when i was at nike loads of people who were way higher you know who are in a, some sort of high position or taking advantage of the fact that our store at the time wasn't necessarily an official Nike outlet. We were kind of as well employed as, you know, um, what, do, what do you call them? Uh, freelancers or whatever it may be. So they could basically bend the rules a bit when it came to taking shoes out of our allocation. Very, very stodgy stuff. Legal scuffles are breaking out of NFTs. Uh, the, um, anyway. I think this is interesting in two very in, no in for various reasons. The first reason why I think this is interesting is because this has long been the assertion in sneaker you know in sneakerhead kind of circles that StockX sells fakes, right? This has been kind of a common thing that keeps getting said, and for the longest time, StockX couldn't really fight against it because they didn't really have a you know any kind of authentication program that they do now but over the last few years they've definitely introduced it and stepped it up a bit and obviously introduced this thing where if you get this hang tag placed on your shoe if you send it to StockX it was basically a stamp to say yeah this thing is legit but unfortunately this issue issue is bigger than StockX 
is bigger than Nike even, or maybe it's something Nike has caused. Because at the moment, with the quality and the level that replica sneakers are at now, it's pretty much impossible to say whether or not a shoe is legit or not, unless it's made, you know, many months after the initial drop has happened, maybe unless it's made to a certain quantity and then loads of random ones appear, even then you can still explain it. You know, if, if you know, you know, in terms of Nike and how they fudge the numbers. So the fact that Nike are unwilling to mass produce limited edition shoes to in order to kind of meet the demands of the customers that clearly want to buy them, because I've never understood now that sneaker collecting has now become a multi-billion dollar industry and everyone in your mum knows what a Yeezy is or has heard of it and knows what limited edition shoe is and what reselling is. I don't get this whole um kind of artificial scarcity that they kind of in, include in the market to make things more scarce when really the truth of the matter is people who are into jordan especially jordan once they don't care if something's a gr if it's a good shoe they're gonna buy it so this idea that because things are limited that's the only reason why people buy it is nonsense people just want to have cool things so if you can sell them cool things it's still a win and also i'd argue that the global customer base for sneakerheads who actually want to wear cheetah print shoes isn't that big anyway so it's not like you're mass marketing them for the entire world you're mass marketing them still for a big group of people but much smaller than the general you know customer base of people who buy their shoes from jd sports so that's obviously an issue that's going on there the other issue also is that Nike is kind of getting onto his views. I think they're doing one well with the other guy, that John Geiger guy, right? In terms of them basically arguing about whether or not they own the likeness of their shoe in in in, in, in its entirety, whether it's done, whether it's kind of used as a platform or as a mold or as a canvas to kind of build up your own shoe, whether it's something that has been painted for to taking a picture of, so as an NFT. Nike are entering into a weird phase where they're basically saying that we own this shape everywhere, that ex everywhere where shapes can be ex can exist, represented, um, showcased, whatever it may be, which gets into some touchy um, territory. But I was also thinking off the back of this, this is also one of the reasons why I'm so adamant that reps play such a good, role in sneaker culture at the moment because the truth of the matter is when you're buying stuff off StockX, especially stuff off resale you're just doing it for your own pride to say that oh okay cool i bought this from a quote-unquote legit retailer or legit marketplace but there's no way of ascertaining whether or not that shoe is legit there is no way the authenticity, the authenticity checks things they do is bullshit there is no way of knowing directly if that shoe is legit because Nike's quality standards are so poor anyway. Um, back in the day when I used to collect shoes, there was such a thing called B grades. I'm not sure they have them anymore, but essentially what B grades were was when shoes were manufactured in the Nike factories and something went wrong. Maybe they misdished a the mud guard. They didn't pop you know punch out enough they didn't punch out the eyelets enough or just something or maybe the the outsole was the wrong color and they'd usually instead of binning them they'd sell them to places like T, tj max tk max and which is why sometimes you'd go to one of those stores and you'd randomly find a really limited edition shoe that would have like a massive b on the inside or you'd find a limited edition shoe that was in a really big size like a size 14 or 15 that maybe didn't sell in the store or whatnot but the reason why I think the market is so messed up now at the moment is because the reps are such good quality. Nike doesn't want to supply um, enough quantity to meet the demand of the customers, right? And the reselling um, industry is booming, booming to a level where it's making it worthwhile for the factories in China to try and get these new edition shoes out quickly as they can so that the resellers can profit and so that they can make loads of money selling the shoes because people are now buying like what what are they called like uas right unauthorized reps like the reps are like the highest quality or whatnot right which sell for sometimes close to retail so if you're a sneaker manufacturer or rep you know a fake shoemaker in china it's within your in best interest to try and get those shoes out as quickly as possible because you could legitimately move a hundred units easy to some reseller who's then going to pop those 100 units right onto StockX and sell them for you know 25 times whatever whatever the fucking retail price was you know like it's a really mad mad game and um yeah it's kind of funny to see just you know this happening to nike because i think for the longest time they've been taking a piss and making it seem as if it's one thing when it clearly is another thing like 
we know where all these backdoor shoes are going. Like I said before, I worked at Nike before. I know, or oh, I've heard of executives, um, you know, taking stuff stuff out of seeding, flipping departments and reselling that or stuff they've been gifted themselves. Like, so let alone, people would look at us employees or people on the outskirts or people who had given the odd shoe here and there and they'll kind of turn their nose up at you if they heard you resold it. And it's like, nah, mate, I know people who have got legitimate jobs that pay them a hundred grand a year at this place who are reselling these shoes. I mean, I actually need to resell these shoes in order to my fucking pay my rent or to go on holiday. These guys don't need to resell them because they've got enough money from their flipping yearly salary, you'd imagine. Because that's what makes it even much more fucked up. Nike also are very generous with the free allocation of shoes. So it's not like you have to even buy any shoes for yourself anymore if you don't want to. Or maybe the limited edition ones you still maybe have to purchase. But if you just want to have cool sneakers to wear... Nike will always give you stuff. There's always a cupboard you can go into to pull shoes out from. But still, these 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 niggas, these motherfuckers still will go out and resell. And the worst thing about those guys is that they were also the tightest people. So they were the ones who were above you, who had more access to things, who had a far more stable job in that building, who definitely weren't going to get fired if some new marketing person came in, as we were, right? We were basically at the behest of whoever was a new marketing manager. They were really in a good, comp really in a good comfortable position, yet they still would be greedy when it comes to sharing a love in terms of giving other people a hookup or allowing you to take maybe the limited edition shoe in the size that you need. They'll be super tight with those kind of things. I never understood why, man. But again, I think once you get in on those places and you become the person that gets stuff and whatnot, it's hard to let it go, especially when you, t you tie that intrinsically to your self-worth or to your value as a human being, which I can understand. And I'm just glad I enjoyed that time as much as I did when it was there. Um, I didn't really tie my whole personality around it, even though I still love sneakers to this day. Um, it's definitely a, a, you know, a part of my life that I feel like contributed to a lot of great things I experienced in life in terms of meeting friends, in terms of traveling to interesting places and whatnot. In terms of my worldview, I think it's been thoroughly informed by my love for streetwear and sneakers for sure. But I never let myself get lost in the source. I never let myself get too attached to this stuff to the point where I would be doing, willing to do anything and everything to get a pair of sneakers on my feet. It really isn't that deep for me, man. It never has been.